It is my privilege today to present a noted author and leader in the field of executive recruitment and talent management. Gary D. Bernison is the Chief Executive Officer of Corn Ferry International, the worldwide leader in matching executives to worthy challenges in identifying the best talent most appropriate for client needs. Corn Ferry employs more than 3,200 people throughout 37 countries, with Mr. Bernison serving on the company's board of directors. Prior to originally joining Corn Ferry in 2002 as its chief financial officer, Mr. Bernison enjoyed a distinguished career serving as principal and CFO of Guidance Solutions, a privately held consulting firm in the technology sector, as senior executive officer and principal at Jeffries & Company, and as a partner of KPMG Pete Marwick. Uh, Mr. Bernison is also a New York Times best-selling author. His books, No Fear of Failure, Real Stories of How Leaders Deal with Risk and Change, uh, The Twelve Absolutes of Leadership, and he has a forthcoming book entitled Lead, and they all draw upon his deep experience as a specialist in human capital and potential, and uh, they are must-reads for any who seek to lead or influence a group of people. Further, Mr. Bernison is a highly sought-after commentator on such international outlets as CNBC, CNN, and Fox Business. And we have been very uh, uh, blessed to have him as a part of our community over this past year. He served as a speaker in our Dean's Executive Leadership Series this past spring. He also led a course with some of our full-time sp students this spring on leadership. And he's joining us again this fall to uh, lead a group of our full-time students in a career uh, support class. So we're thrilled that he's not only uh, prominent in the business community, but he's become an important part of our community as well. So President Benton, it is truly my privilege and honor to present Gary D. Bernison for Pepperdine University's preeminent distinction, the Honorary Doctor of Laws degree. Thank you, Dean Livingstone. Gary D. Bernison, because of your career accomplishments and management expertise, which have guided your company to recognize and recognition as one of the world leaders in locating and guiding persons of professional expertise and talent to where they are best utilized. Because of a personal life that demonstrates faithfulness and loyalty to those whom you love and care for, especially your wife Leslie and your five children. Because you have shared the benefit of your wide experience through your writings so that we may all take lessons in leadership from the successes and sometimes even the challenges of those who've done so much and because the example of your life fully lived in devotion to family, in commitment to excellence, and in humble service to others as an inspiration to us and especially this graduating class. Therefore, be it known that by the power vested in me by the Pepperdine University Board of Regents, I now confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws with all the rights, all the duties, and all the privileges thereto appertaining. Congratulations, Dr. Bernison. Thank you, sir. Thanks for letting us on. Okay, you guys excited? Yeah. Come on, are you excited? Yeah. President uh, Benton, Dean Livingstone, certainly this graduating class, family, friends, relatives, I'm, uh, I'm humbled and I'm honored. And so I say, thank you. You know, you've achieved something that I never did. And so I'm not going to tell you what to think, but I'm going to give you a couple things to think about. And that's change and purpose. And first, let me start with leadership. You know, leadership is all about making others believe and then enabling that belief to become reality. Many years ago in a remote village, Mother brought her son to this great leader. The boy had a problem with sugar and sweets, candy. And so she says to this great leader, can you help him? And the leader says, well, come back in a week. Well, a week goes by and mom brings her son to this great leader. And Gandhi says, well, stop eating sweets. And the mother is confused. Wow, if it was that easy, why didn't you just tell me that last week? Well, see, the moral of the story is 
you must be the change that you want to see in the world. You know, you're entering a business environment with unprecedented change. We love change. We embrace change. Politicians win elections based on the mantra of change. And so how are you going to drive change? Well, number one, you got to remember that change begins with the man in the mirror, with the person in the mirror. Secondly, is that to get people to change, you've got to meet them where they are, not where you are and not where you want to be. You know, at Corn Ferry, every hour on the hour, for half of our business, we put somebody in a job that makes a lot of money. We've assessed millions, millions of executives. You know what we found is the number one predictor of success? You're going to say the Pepperdine MBA? Come on, Matt, come on. Yeah, that helps. That helps. But the number one predictor of success, more than IQ, more than EQ, is learning agility. The ability of knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. And so I would ask you, when you leave this glorious place, that you never stop learning. Never stop learning. Because those people that are successful, what we've seen, is they've got this insatiable appetite to read, to listen, to study, science, music, history. That's what it takes. You know, you're also entering a world that's increasingly divided. You know, the left is becoming further left and the right's becoming further right. Differences overshadow commonalities. Self-interest trumps shared interest. So how do you navigate this world? Well, I would submit that you've got to find your why. You've got to find your purpose. And that purpose is not money. Money is not a durable commodity. Now, don't get me wrong. If I ask to show of hands who's underpaid, I guarantee you every single hand's going to go up here. Right? Come on. But if I ask you, how many of you think you're overpaid? Not many hands are going to go up. Not many hands are going to go up. You know, as a CEO and you as future leaders, I find myself in the what business and the how business, the when business and the who business. But at the end of the day, I'm in the why business, the purpose business. Because what you're going to have to do is get all these individual self-interests and get them oriented towards that common goal, towards that common purpose, towards that why. Why are we in business? And it's not making money. That is an outcome. But why is this company in business? Why are you doing what you're doing? You know, I've been humbled and honored to meet with the outliers of achievement, presidents of nations, global CEOs, politicians, the world's richest man. And you know, a, a mosaic appears and emerges from those meetings. And what it says is, wealth is not money. Wealth is responsibility. That leadership is not authority. Leadership is authenticity. You see, you can look in their eyes and see their soul. Each of them have a why. They have a common purpose. And I found that in terms of leading a company in 40 countries around the world. Yeah, money's important. Don't get me wrong, it's in the top five. But it's not number one. It is not how you create an engaged team, a motivated team, an inspired team. People want to be loved. 
People want to be cared for. People want to be developed. People want to be stimulated. People want to know that what they're doing contributes to a grander purpose in life and that somebody else notices that. Well, so why am I here at this exact moment on this grand day? Well, I'm here because I believe in this university's Pepperdine's purpose. To have graduates who lead purposeful lives, servant-minded servant -minded leaders. You know, we've seen that personally. You know, my wife went to this university a couple years ago. And she lost her both, both her parents died when she was at this university. And I got to tell you, what this university did in terms of the nourishment, in terms of the nurturing, in terms of the care, was unbelievable. Unbelievable. You see, this university lived its purpose. This university changed her life. And we'll never forget it. You know, we do so many things without thinking. You know, I saw some smartphones here. How about taking something mundane? Haircuts. Haircuts. Guess what? Guess what? You're going to get 400 haircuts between today and when you reach the other side. 400. But guess what? Let me compare that to the number of people that you're going to touch on average. You know what that number is? That number is 100,000. You're going to get 400 haircuts. You're going to think about it all the time. But you're going to have the ability to touch 100,000 people, to change their life. You know, these smartphones, I know you all got them. You know, we go around looking down, staring at that silly screen. And you know what? You know how much time we're going to spend on those smartphones when you add it all up? Two years. Two years of your life is going to be spent staring at the palm of your hand. And so I'd ask you, do we ever look up? Do we ever look around? Do we ever try to change, change somebody's life? That's my challenge. That's my challenge to you. You know, the biggest leadership lesson I learned was not in business. It was on a basketball court. I coached boys basketball for many years. A few years ago, we had a great team. A bunch of 12-year-old kids, we were undefeated. It was a Saturday afternoon, we were practicing. It was cold, rainy. <coughs> There were 12 boys. We were going to play in the championship game the next day. And on this team, there was one boy who was a little smaller, a little slower, and not quite as athletic. In fact, Jason hadn't scored a single point all year. And so, on this last practice, on this rainy day, at the end of every practice, I have somebody take a three-point shot. And if they make it, guess what? Nobody's running laps. If they miss, everybody's going to run laps. I love it. And so I said, who wants the rock? And so 11 kids are jumping up and down. I do, I do, coach, I do. Let me shoot. And guess what? One kid was not jumping up and down. You know who that was? That was Jason. So I took the ball, and I passed it to him, and I said, take the shot. The other kids are moaning, oh, come on. He's going to miss the shot. We're going to run a lapse for sure. So Jason, he's got this look of terror. He's got this look of failure. And he shoots. And that ball goes right to the rim hits the back of the iron, 
and just misses. And so I did something I'd never done before. I took that ball and I shoved it at him and I said, shoot! He didn't hesitate. He got up there, he shot it, and that ball swished. The kids are jumping up and down. They pile on Jason. And I notice out of the corner of my eye, his dad. And his dad had this understated smile. Grinning. So we were packing up, and who comes over to me but Jason's dad? And he says to me, with tears in his eyes, he says, You know, I don't care if Jason scores a single point tomorrow. For me, that was the whole season. You know, we won that game. I can't tell you the score. I can't even tell you how we did it. The only thing I remember from that whole season was the teary eyes of a father with a satisfied smile and a satisfied soul. Now I know that each of you is gonna be wildly successful. I've seen it. I've seen it in the classes that I've taught. But my question for you is, are you going to change people's lives? And so I challenge you to start with something simple. And it goes something like this. In business, when you have any interaction with a customer, with an employee, with a colleague, Ask yourself after that conversation, do they feel better after than before? You see, if you're looking for other people to believe in you, you're going to be waiting a long time for results. Believe in others, and you'll be amazed by the results. Thank you, and congratulations.